Frenzy Highlights brought to you by CMSC Driving School, offering flexible scheduling for classroom and road lessons at six Central Mass locations. Online at centralmasssafety.org. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Cariglia and Bay State Savings Bank. Coming up next on the Friday Night Football Frenzy, Colonial League team square off as Asimut visits Bay Path. A playoff spot could be on the line when Shepherd Hill takes on Wachusett. West Boylston goes north to battle the tough Lunenburg Blue Knights. It's week five, we're ready, are you? The Frenzy starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to the Frenzy. Kevin Shea, Andy Lacombe. We are into October now. We're into the second half of the season, week five, and Division Four has been turned on its ear tonight. Two huge upsets tonight. Yeah, you know, teams rounding into, you've been rounding into midseason form for weeks, but teams rounding into midseason form, but things getting shaken up. I'm telling Those you, these are huge Playoff ratings games. and power ratings coming out this week and people started to see where they are. It's going to be a little bit of a change. On Monday, Turn them on their ear Tuesday, in Division 4. Because of some big games. And we have a big one with playoff implications right off the hop tonight when Shepherd Hill takes it to the Badlands to take on Wachusett. This one in D3. The Badlands had a game of catch with like glow sticks. Or All right. Relatively All right. subdued. Yeah, sure. I like it. It was 28-7 Mountaineers third quarter. Deshaun Henderson hard charging. Cutting back and picking up first down yardage. For the Mountaineers, that's Sam Brewer. Stiff arming his way, yep, get off me! To the end zone, 35-7. Wachusett, this is what all the kids are doing now, they're just, they're handshake. It's a, yep, thank you, all right, all good right, job. I like it. Next Wachusett possession, it's Brewer again, bouncing off tackles. And he's headed to the end zone. The band is on the field, what is going on? Oh no! He's in for a touchdown, Colby Egan's pass incomplete on the play. 42-7. Wachusett, the defense battling for the Mountaineers. Trying to lock down the Rams. Jared Wallace, Tyler Hearn doing a job. But in the fourth quarter, a little misdirection from the hill. Nathaniel Cooper, one of the talented running backs, is gone for the touchdown. Not enough. Wachusett with the W, 42 to 21. From the General's Den, we have Doherty and Lemonster. First quarter, no score, Noah Callery. Going deep to John Forson. Forson hauling it in, and he's taken down at the 18-yard line, and Doherty is rolling. Callery slinging it out to the side. Lemister defense. Great job swarming to the football. Causing the fumble, Adam Couch recovering for the Blue Devils. The Blue Devil defense was huge in the first half. Lemister throwing. Josh Obasui applying the heat. He throws it away. Intentional grounding in the end zone, so it's a safety 2-0 Doherty. Doherty converting on the ensuing drive. Calorie to Tejon Vassar. Vassar to the land of six. Nine nothing, Doherty in front. Second quarter, so you want to see Vassar play some defense. Coming up, setting the edge. Nice open field tackle by Vassar. Doherty throwing the football. Zachary Del Judas picks it off, and Del Judas with a great return, going all the way across the field, showing off the speed, holding on to the football at the end. 9-7, Blue Devils in front. Doherty answering again. Calorie going deep to Vassar. Vassar's elusive. Whoop, whoop. Making Good. a couple guys miss. Great pursuit to the football by Lemonster, though. Staying with it and making the stop. So, same drive, second and goal. Doherty running. Lemonster's Darian O'Brien strips the ball. Great hit. Adam Couch thinking scoop and score. Scoop and score. 96 yards on the return for the touchdown. It was 17-9 Lemonster at that point. But the Highlanders storm back. Doherty wins it 45-24 tonight. All right, this is Algonquin hosting Neshoba. First, Algonquin drive, fourth and six. And Brendan Hermanspan completes it to Jack Branson. Oh, and Jack talk tie. He going in for a touchdown. It's six to nothing. Same two, hooking up for two points. Eight to nothing, Algonquin. Neshoba, second possession. Handoff here is to Danny McNulty. He runs it in from 12 yards out. And the Chieftains on the board. Two-point conversion attempt. It's McNulty again. 
gets inside the pylon, and we are tied at eight apiece. The Shoba defense then making plays. Brendan Lee stripping the ball. Evan Doig recovering. Chieftains in business. The Shoba driving now, second and long. Sam Bolinski, little screen to McNulty. I McNulty's like on the move. He's got AB roots. Is he like that Duffy McNulty guy it, used to play? Yeah, I think it Providence is. Providence College. Next, it's Bolinski to Matt Johnson for the touchdown. Neshoba holds serve. They get the win, 29-15. One of them, is Duffy or John McNulty. Adds depth to the Friars bench. Duffy Drafted McNulty. And Tantasqua. Tantasqua gushing energy to start this one off. Indian mm. swimmer in the football. Jackson saw it, strips the football, forces the fumble, and recovers it. Call him LT. Very next drive, Crafton taking advantage. It is Sonic on the ground, breaks through 35 yards for the touchdown. Crafton's up 7 0. Tantasqua coming back. Ryan Sears running hard, not trying to avoid contact, but embracing it. Lowering his shoulder, sideline run for Sears. And he trucks his way to a big first down. Fourth down, Warriors needing four yards. Give it to Sears. Sears is close. The measurement confirms. He got the first down first by the down. nose of the football. <laughs> Seems like the a theme guy here. Knew it. Ryan Sears running hard. Punishing runner down to the one yard line. Now it is fourth and one. Sears looking like Mets minor leaguer and former Florida QB Ooh. Tim Tebow. He throws it to Ryan Bonja to tie the game at seven just three minutes before the half. Tantasco wins 14-13. They stop a fake wow. field goal on the three yard line with one second left. A huge win for the Warriors. This is Fitchburg, much improved, taking on Marlboro at Crocker Field tonight. Late second quarter, Richie Weber connecting with Matt Keenan from Marlboro, and the Panthers are deep into Red Raider territory. Now it's Lou Vigen. Toughest runner in Seaman, the man! He's going in from a yard out. Fitchburg's a 14-7, though, at the half. Third quarter, Fitchburg looking to answer. Stiff arm from Lewis Alderondo. First down, Red Raiders. Panther defense coming up big. And Andrew Brooks. Ball pops loose. Edwin Cardona recovers. Red Raiders after forcing a turnover. Lewis Alderondo, a big catch and run. Down to the 13 yard line. Now to the fourth. Dameron Savidra, 26 yard field goal. Fitchburg's up 17 to seven. They hang on to win it. 17, 16, you're fine. Field goal kickers winning games. We got Bay Path and Asimut. Second quarter, Asimut's David Doucette running it in for the touchdown. Bay Path special teams coming up with the block on the PAT. Looks like Christian Bolin getting a hand on it. Then it's Bay Path driving. Michael Keeler completing to number 12. Not in your program, known only to family and friends, but it's a nice play. Next play, Dylan Clemmer. Stepping up defensively, it's tipped and picked off. The old tip drill. Clemmer coming up with a big interception. Asimut in the red zone. Matteo Ciccone. Ciccone follows his blockers, takes it down to the five yard line. Next play, it is Nicholas Carvalho. Carvalho to the land of six. So many weapons on this Asimut team. And some love for the big man. Asimut's big defensive lineman, James Leishman, picks it off. Leishman with a huge interception and the first half, and Asimut with a big win. 49 0 is your final. You look at that Asimut team, and that is a complete team. I yeah. mean, you got guys, you got three or four, five different guys that can run the football for Asimut. They can spread it around offensively. You can't focus on one or two guys. Leishman's such a great athlete. You saw it there with the interception. But this is a team that starts up front. They win the game up front, but their specialty guys, their skill guys are exceptional. Rebounding, you know, rebounding. Asimut rebounds after a loss to Blackstone Valley Tech. And then you've got Wachusett rebounding after a loss to St. John's. And they were convincing tonight they gave up a couple of big plays and coach Dubzinski not going to be too happy about that think he may have expressed that with the team in the halftime locker room someone on the sideline may have let me in on that one but you know what it's a rebound win it's a big win in the playoff standings for division three watch it looking impressive tonight really moving the rock how about Tantasqua Tantasqua beating Grafton tonight is a program win for the Warriors this is the team and a group that has been working hard in the offseason. They had a great weight room. Their coach was telling us in the preseason 
how hard they lifted, how many guys they had in that yeah. program. Well, this is where you see it pay off. You see the chemistry, you see the hard work. That's a huge victory and one that there's gonna, that's gonna springboard them into the playoffs. Big against Auburn last week, a bigger win this week against Grafton. They are locked into one of those seeds right now. Still some time, but Tantasco looking good. We're back. Doherty holds serve at home. Yeah. How about that one? More to come on the frenzy. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody. I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. Take a stand, lend a hand. It isn't big to make others feel small. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. Alexander the end zone, touchdown, Holy Cross. Jeff Wade on the sneak. Wade goes in for the touchdown. They go up top and it is caught for the touchdown. Dorsey, he caught it for the touchdown. Wade over the middle, has a man, caught for the touchdown. 45 yard field goal for the win. And the kick is through. Holy Cross with a walk off win. You gotta believe, you gotta believe. Join us this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. for the Worcester Columbus Day Parade telecast on Charter TV3 with your hosts, Olivia Lemon and Bill Gagnon. The annual Worcester Columbus Day Parade telecast is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. The Worcester Columbus Day Parade, an annual Italian tradition which delights the community as well as the city of Worcester. The Worcester Columbus Day Parade, live on Charter TV3 this Sunday beginning at 12.30 p.m. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is brought to you by Unibank, The Sullivan Group, Poochie's Fine Jewelry, Milford Federal, The Central Mass Safety Council, Holy Cross Athletics, Harrington Physician Services, Nichols College, and Berterra Nissan of Auburn. All right, welcome back, everyone. Well, we have a great one for you. West Boston and Lunenburg, both teams coming in undefeated at 4-0. So what do you got to do? You got to get Mike Ross's pregame speech for West Boylston, right? It's a sacrifice. When you're pushing a sled, you push it six, seven times, it gets hot. There's a reason we do that. The reason is for games like today. The reason is for games like today. You got to push that extra minute. You got to push game everything you have, Mr. LeBrack, for the guy next to you. You got to sacrifice yourself for this team. Or everything we did goes out the window. We are a team. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Let's go! Let's go! All right, Rossi's got him ready to go as always. Scoreless in the first quarter. David Rizzuto plowing into the end zone. West Boston drawing first blood. It is 7-0 Lions. Then it's Corey Shea. Taking the handoff. Corey Shea switching fields. Corey Shea going 60 yards to the house. Great vision. And it's 14-0 Lions in front. Second quarter, West Boston looking to throw. And the defense coming up big. Donovan Powell picks it off. And he's not done there. He takes it down to the 11-yard line. Next play, Christopher Kostich handing off to Duncan Poitras. Poitras is just a freshman. Gets around the corner and goes 89 yards for the touchdown. The PAT was blocked. But Lunenburg is back. It is 14 to 6. Ensuing kickoff. And here comes Corey Shea. 
Corey Shea breaks the tackle, spins through another tackle. Shea to the sideline. Great fake, and now he's just running away from people. Run, Corey! Run. I've never known a Shea to have great foot speed. Nope, no relation. He takes it in. Shea had three touchdowns. Rizzuto had three touchdowns. He's Rizzuto back. is back. He's back. West Boston wins 43 to 22. All right, the David Prouty Band always giving a great halftime show up at Eugene Hurley Field, taking on Northbridge today late in the first half. David Prouty's Cameron Doobie, big run up the gut, giving the Panthers some momentum going into the break. Northbridge defense, though, makes a big play to end the threat. Brian Wildman, high points, the football comes up with a pick. Wildman's in the highlights every week. David Prouty. They defensively making some plays. Jason Anderson with the interception there as they put some pressure on the quarterback. Northbridge then coming back. Zach Roberts hooking up with Colin McNeil for first down yardage. And it's Roberts, outstanding athlete. Not even the mud can slow him down. Good pump fake. And there goes Roberts shucking. Going through the D, and he's going in the end zone. 34 to six at that point, Northbridge. Rams get the win, 40 to 12. All righty, I got Nipmuc hosting St. Bernard's under the lights. They brought the lights in. First quarter, St. B's throwing, and it's Nipmuc's Richard Brony breaking on the football, and he picks it off. The Warriors defense with a big play. Second quarter. It is Brony on offense. Brony gets through the line. Brony, foot race to the end zone, and he's just tripped up. Shy of the goal line. Judah Dishington on the keeper. Behind his O-line. 7-0, Nipmuc in front. More Nipmuc defense. Preston Doherty. Preston Doherty reading his keys. Covering his zone, high points the football, he picks it off. And the Warriors are in business. Doherty had ideas on a big return too. Brony leaping over the pile for the touchdown. 14-0 Nipmuc and the Warriors win it 14-8, your final. Fellas, this game's about you guys, all right? We put in the work, all right? We challenged you, two weeks ago we challenged you on offense to play a clean offensive game. You did that and we put up 38 points. Last week we challenged you to stop that running back, to tackle, you did it. All right, now we gotta put both together <coughs> and both for four quarters. We gotta play till the final whistle. All right, chilly night, Worcester Tech visiting Monty Tech up north. First quarter, Eagles thrown. Defense, Sincere Mills with the pick. And we had a defensive struggle early on in this one. Monty Tech's defense showing up early on. Gabriel Bazuski blowing the play up. The Bulldogs celebrate. There they are. Look at get two Bulldog mascots. Have a day. Second quarter. Enlo, Andrew Enlo, my man. Great basketball player as well. Gets outside, breaks a couple tackles. Look out, Enlo. Finally brought down deep. No, he's not even down yet. He's still going. He's like the Energizer Bunny. He's still he going. He can't be still a little stiff arm. Now he's brought down deep in Monty Tech territory. Long developing play by Enlo, and he's going to cap it with a shorter run. This one just five yards, a little bit easier for Andrew. He gets in. Six nothing at that point, but Monty Tech comes back to win it. 22 to 18. Bartlett and Lester, the Indians traveling to the Wolverines' den tonight. A little bit of mud on the field tonight. So the run game coming out early for Lester. Bryce Gosselin taking it in for the touchdown, and it's 6 0 Lester Wolverines. Bartlett then going for it on fourth down to the Lester defense. Coming up big. Lester holding the fort. Daniel Merrow. Getting it going offensively. Merrill going deep to Jack O'Neill. O'Neill hauling it in. One of the great receivers in Central Mass. That's a great ball, too. It sets up a little razzle-dazzle run for Gosselin. Breaking tackles. Gosselin can smell the end zone. He's in for his second touchdown of the night. Bartlett driving before the half. Romeo Soto getting loose. Romeo Soto, great run. 
eludes a couple tacklers, switches the ball, and he's going to run tough into Leicester territory. Bartlett throwing for the end zone. Jeffrey Pachowski picks it off. This is a physical game. Guys going head to head on every play. Lester goes on to win this one 20 to nothing, your final in a physical affair. All right, we took you up to the Interlands. Quabbin hosting Littleton tonight. And the Panthers ready to go in Barry. First quarter, it's Littleton's Braden Lynn rolling and finding Austin Lynn. And Austin stretching for the pylon. The officials will discuss and decide it is a touchdown. So the Tigers go for two. Will Scott. Great Scott going in. Eight to nothing. Littleton. Bob and battling. Seth Talbot. Find Tristan Kemp and company. Hard charging out of the double wing. First down inside Littleton territory. But the drive would stall and back come the Tigers. Lynn toss out to Mitch Bowden. Here comes Bowden. Looks like a two yard gain. Oh, oh, Bowden's gone. Wait, oh, oh, still in bounds. And he just, he just like trucked by like a freight train. You know how the freight trains, they just stop. They're not going all that hard, but they are, they are strong. The big fella is in, 16-0 Littleton. Second quarter, Littleton looking for more. Talbot going up and getting it. A pick for Quabbin, and he takes it back until he meets Bowden right there. Oh, Talbot's a tough player. Littleton gets the win, 47-14. We got Southbridge and Millbury tonight from the Woolly Swamp, the original Woolly Swamp. Third quarter, 35-0 Millbury in front. Watch number 10 for the Woolies. Freshman Derek Paris sticking his nose in. Carlos Morales running tough, and Paris a good job of staying with it and making the tackle. Ray Richards loving it. Fourth quarter, Alex Torres for Southbridge getting around the corner. Torres showing off the speed, and he will take it to the house. 35-6, the Pioneers are on the board. And they're going for two. Carlos Morales in for the two-point conversion, makes it 35-8. Milbury gets the win, 42-8 is your final. That Milbury team is very, very impressive. Week in and week out, they have a bunch of different weapons, but what they do is they have that team concept, and everyone pulls their own weight, everyone's pulling the rope in the same direction. Yeah, you're going to have a couple guys that score the touchdowns and get the headlines. But this is a team that their front seven on defense locked it down tonight. And offensively, they were opening holes for the running back, giving the quarterback time. It's a good team win. Nice uh, to see the natural grass and the mud. I mean, this oh, is what you great. want to play in, right? The, the mud, the mudder games. How about the team down at Nipmuc? Sean Hill's bunch, resilient, coming off of a loss to Northbridge a couple of weeks ago. They go after Hudson last week, and they get a big win against St. Bernard's tonight. Richard Brony is a real talent. Up, uh, up front running the football and on both sides of the football. And you know what? That offensive line, you see that push? Those big guys? Nipmuc, hey, they're, they're, they're there, man. And they're the defending champs a couple years Until running otherwise. for a reason. you got to yeah. knock them off. Yeah, and Lester bouncing back tonight, too. Lester, you look at them and what they've done and a couple tough losses, but the Wolverines bouncing back tonight at home, and they do it on defense. They get the shutout over a good Bartlett team. Plenty more to come on the Frenzy. Stay with us. Sullivan Group is an insurance and risk management services firm based in Worcester for over 60 years. Our company values, our family values. Committed to our clients and finding them the best solutions. Committed to being independent. Committed to our community. We live here, we work here, we volunteer here. The Sullivan Insurance Group. Committed to excellence. Providing our customers with the highest level of quality, service, and value. Poochie's Fine Jewelry, 205 West Boylston Street in West Boylston. Looking for a local lender you can trust? Come to Milford Federal. Our great rates, low closing costs, and personalized customer service have made us your family financial center for over 130 years. Apply online or visit us at one of our branches today. Harrington Physician Services specializes in the understanding, prevention, and management of complex sports injuries and athletic rehabilitation. Whether you need care for a torn rotator cuff or ACL, our board-certified physicians are here to serve you. We offer comprehensive physical therapy and rehabilitation in Charlton, Southbridge, and Webster, and an on-site radiology partnership with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. To learn more, go to HarringtonHospital.org. Harrington Healthcare System, compassionate, quality care. 
Holy Cross football is back in Worcester. Don't miss family fun and Division I football right in your backyard. Tickets start at just $15. Visit GoHolyCross.com slash tickets or call 1-844-GO-CROSS. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. Make the grade. Join the anti-bully crusade. Who wants a bully for a friend? We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Curriculum and Bay State Savings Bank. All right, another big game tonight with playoff implications. Air Shirley and Murdoch. A lot of eyes on this one to see how it's going to shake out, how it would play out, and who would win. Yeah, and we went to it. We were there. For we were that there to reason. cover it. Let's roll the tape. 14 0 Murdoch in the third quarter. Air Shirley's Owen Vi Osagi in for the touchdown, and it's a 14 7 game. Air Shirley down by a touchdown. Ensuing kickoff. Air Shirley's Vi Osagi. Recovers the onside kick. Beautiful play. Great kick, great recovery. Fourth quarter, but it's the same drive. And it's Halston Wilkie going up top to Logan Walker for the touchdown. What a grab by Walker. We're tied up at 14 off. Murdoch looking to pass. Nick Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis. Holds him down for the sack. Heck of a fighter. Heck of a fighter. Then it's Wilkie with time. Wilkie going up top to James Robinson. Robinson behind the defense. Land of six, 20 to 14. Air Shirley, Air Shirley wins it. 27 to 26 is your final. So a big win there for Air Shirley. Tomorrow, our game of the week is WPI and Catholic. It's a new Mac game for WPI. So this is a very, very big game for Chris Robertson's crew. What I love about Chris Robertson is he tries to put the fence around Central Mass. He mm -hmm. recruits a lot of Central Mass kids. And you're going to hear a lot of familiar names called tomorrow on the field for the engineers. Yeah, he crushes it. Shepard Hill standout, Nick Ostrowski, Tommy Farocco on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, these are guys that are getting it done at a high level. And he loves the Central Mass guys. Right now, though, Chris Robertson wants to see improvement from his team. And this is a big one in the league, as our Brenna Wilson tells us, especially because there's a bye week coming up next. WPI is halfway through their season. Head coach Chris Robertson likes what he sees on the field, but he says the team still has not put a complete game together. I think, you know, offensively we need to do a better job of protecting the ball. We've turned the ball over in almost every game. We're not good in the plus minus. Defensively, we can't give up big plays. The engineers face new Mac rival Catholic this week. The Cardinals come into the game looking for their first win of the season. They've struggled in the run game, so we have to do well defending that. And their quarterback is very good. He'll throw the ball 50 times against us. So we've got to be able to put some pressure on him and force him into some bad decisions. And offensively, if we can get Sean McAllen going and get him some free space, he'll, he'll, he'll beat anybody in the open field. Playing Catholic this week, WPI is heading into the meat of their conference, a conference only in its second year of existence. And head coach Chris Robertson says with a new league comes new competition. It's different than the old Liberty League. You know, we don't play teams as big as Hobart and St. Lawrence anymore. Um, it's different, but I think it's, it's really cool. You have some of the best military academies in the country. You have the premier Catholic school in the country. You have two of the most elite engineering schools in the country. Um, it's a very cool conference to be a part of. And, you know, I think for the most part, you know, you have some teams at the top. But for the most part, each week there's um, great competitiveness. And it's um, you have to play well to win for sure. WPI heads into their bye week next week. A win over Catholic will be key to providing momentum for their second half of the season. Brenna Wilson, the Friday Night Football Frenzy. All right, our coverage of Catholic and WPI can be seen on delay at 7 p.m. on Saturday. A big one 
for WPI. Again, they go into that bye week. It's a, it's a game changer type thing. You win, you get healthy because they're still a little dinged up. You get healthy, then you get into some, some tough games with Kings Point and then MIT after that if you're WPI looking to make a postseason run. Yeah, WPI under Chris Robertson, they've always tried to strive for that balanced attack. They're going to run the football well and they're going to throw it. And throughout the years, they've had different running backs. McAllen's in there now, and he's been tearing it up since he stepped on campus. But what I love is WPI runs the football first very well. They still want to establish the run. They got a new trigger man in Julian Nyland, the quarterback, coming out from Melrose. He's done a great job with this offense. Showed a lot of poise and a lot of leadership. And that's one thing you want from your quarterback. Above all else, you want a leader back there. Nyland's a leader for this WPI team, and he's got that offense moving. Yeah, and he's a guy who can run and throw. He's a dual threat, that is for sure. McAllen is a guy who can really make some, some guys miss when he gets in the open field. And he's poised to have a pretty big game if WPI can get out and block for him. He's a guy right now, the offense really runs on, on McAllen as well as the quarterback, Nyland. And defensively, this is a team, Kev, the WPI, they can be physical up front. Even though they're a little banged up up front, they can impose their will. And if they do that, it's going to be a nice day for the engineers on Saturday. Yeah, they're always a team defensively that wants to establish that physicality right off the bat. All right, you can catch the Frenzy Extra each and every week right here on Charter TV 3. Thursday nights at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, Andy and I will, and Jim Wilson will discuss all the high school games and all the teams and players you need to know about each and every week. Thursday night, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock right here on Charter TV 3. Plenty more of the Frenzy, including Man of the Match, coming up when we come back. Right now, Batera Nissan's offering several new models, the Nissan Kicks and the Nissan Leaf. Come down and see us right now for our model year and closeout event. We have to sell these 2018s and the rebates are incredible. Batera Nissan's also gonna offer our local employers better discounts than everybody else. If you currently work for UMass, Fallon, Wyman Gordon, St. Cobain's, and several other companies, we're gonna offer you an increased discount above and beyond what everyone else sees. Come on and join us here at Batera Nissan on Route 20 in Auburn. Bison Pride is the feeling that you get when you're with all of your Nichols friends and you're rooting for your team and your school and your community. Yes, even though we are a smaller school, you feel the big school vibe here. With my Bay State Savings Bank mobile app, I don't need to drive to a local branch to deposit my money. I can deposit a check just by taking a picture on my phone. Anywhere, anytime. Done. I just saved on gas and saved myself some time. It's a win for everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody? For everybody. For everybody! I know. Bay State Savings Bank is proud to sponsor the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Bay State Savings Bank. We take banking personally. Join us this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. for the Worcester Columbus Day Parade telecast on Charter TV3. With your hosts, Olivia Lemon and Bill Gagnon. The annual Worcester Columbus Day Parade telecast is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. The Worcester Columbus Day Parade, an annual Italian tradition which delights the community as well as the city of Worcester. The Worcester Columbus Day Parade, live on Charter TV3 this Sunday beginning at 12.30 p.m. Some teams putting up big numbers big. tonight. Nathan Gamble. Four yards to Paydirt, and Wachusett leads 36-0 midway through the third. Ryan Walsh taking it in for six, 40 yards on the touchdown. Michael Pena rolling left, hits Eric Mooney, who goes in for the score, 7-0. Nichols, Branson, Jack with a nice cutback, and gets a good thing going on the drive. Holbrook smells the end zone and gets there. All right, man of the match time. My man of the match goes to Tantasqua's Ryan Sears. 38 carries, 174 yards, and he threw for a touchdown. Tantasqua with a huge upset win tonight over Grafton. You know with Sears, the warranty is going to be good. It's going to be built to last. Ryan Sears was a beast tonight. He is my man of the match. Uh, one time I ordered a treadmill and I got an elliptical from Sears. Anyway, Gavin Mainzo and Sam Brewer, I couldn't decide. They had three touchdowns apiece for Wachusett. I'm giving it to both of them. Mainzo started the damage for Wachusett. His big runs, long runs early in this game, led Wachusett to an early lead, and Brewer was the closer. He came on when they need him in the third quarter and put up some big runs. Brewer and Mainzo 
are my men of the match for Wachusett in a big win for the Mountaineers. Doherty coach Sean Mulcahy was Bill Belichick-esque tonight. He got two calls overturned while wow. I was there. Once the officials thought it was second down, he went out on the field and said, I'm going to tell you what the plays were. It's actually third down. They said, you know what, coach, you're right. Another time was a pass interference call, but it was behind the line of scrimmage. He went out and explained that. He got it overturned. He's respected, and he should be. He's a great coach. Next week, he's going to have a cutoff hoodie. Look for it. We'll have him on the frenzy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for WPI.